people are familiar with the NES platformer Little Nemo the Dream Master, but the slumbering hero actually had another video game adventure that is often forgotten. An arcade game that was developed alongside the NES title and released shortly after it in late 1990 to very little fanfare. Nemo's story, however, starts long before video games were ever conceived, as the young hero's escapades actually began over 100 years ago at the turn of the 20th century. Little Nemo first started as a newspaper comic strip in 1905 titled Little Nemo in Slumberland. It was created by American cartoonist Winsor McKay and began its publication in the New York Herald. The comic gained popularity for its interesting premise and unique artwork. It centered around a young boy named Nemo and the wondrous adventures he would find himself in after he fell asleep. Throughout the decades after its release, Nemo's story would inspire and be referenced in countless pieces of entertainment media, from Phil Collins and A Nightmare on Elm Street to Tom Petty and Marvel's Power Pack, Nemo's influence spanned many mediums. The comic strip itself was also adapted over the years into theatrical plays, children's books, films, an opera, and of course, video games. In 1989, an animated film based on Nemo's adventures was released in Japan. While the movie's concept would be championed and produced by Yutaka Fujioka, the project would be a collaborative effort between many Japanese and American film producers. Pending the screenplay would be Chris Columbus of Home Alone and Harry Potter fame, while both Masami Hata and William Hertz would be directing. Japanese studio Tokyo Movie Shinsha would handle the film's animation, fresh off finishing production of their previous movie, the incredibly successful and groundbreaking anime, Akira. When the movie finally released in Japan, it would simply be titled Nemo a much shorter title than its overseas name, Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland. It would hit theaters alongside some tough competition in Hayao Miyazaki's Kiki's Delivery Service. The film failed to attract viewers and was sadly considered a box office flop. <laughs> Shortly after this, Capcom would surprisingly license the rights for the movie's characters and story for not one, but two new video games they would develop and release the following year in 1990. The first would be Little Nemo the Dream Master, known in Japan as Pajama Hero Nemo. It would be a pretty standard platformer with an interesting mechanic that allowed you to ride various animals who would help you make your way through the game's eight challenging stages. The game was received well when it launched, but in North America, the movie would not see a release for another two years, and the game's character recognition Capcom had licensed would be lost on its audience. A few months later, their second Little Nemo game would release, though it would not be found on store shelves, but instead in arcades. Just like the Japanese film, this second game would simply be titled Nemo. It would run on Capcom's CPS-1 arcade board and launch in both Japanese and British arcades in late 1990. While both of Capcom's Nemo games were based on the animated movie, the arcade version seemed to stay a bit more faithful to its source material. The title featured pretty simplistic platforming and hack and slash gameplay. It also allowed for two people to play cooperatively together. One would control Nemo, and the other a clown from the movie named Flip. The arcade game offered seven different stages based on different scenes from the film. King Morpheus, Slumberland, Big Balloon, Police Station, Nightmare Land, Nightmare Castle, and culminated in a final battle against the Nightmare King. It was later found that Capcom actually cut two stages from the game just before it was finalized. Goat Car and Long Stairs. Both stages were nearly complete, so the reason behind their removal is quite strange. Similar to the Japanese theatrical release, Nemo was released alongside some very tough competition in arcades. This competition was not from another company though, but from Capcom itself. Releasing just shortly after Nemo's debut, Street Fighter II was launched to resounding success and completely took arcades by storm, overshadowing almost everything in its path, 
including Nemo. The two titles would share the same CPS-1 arcade board, and desperate to cash in on Street Fighter's success, arcade owners would push other games aside to make room for more Street Fighter II boards and cabinets to keep up with the large demand. Nemo, just like the film it was based on, failed to find much success and would be put to bed a bit too early without ever really being given a chance to prevail. The series sadly never saw any additional video games over the next few decades, but with a Netflix movie adaptation in the works, maybe someday we'll get another chance to step back into the wonderful world of Slumberland. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, this video was kind of interesting because I hadn't really planned on covering Little Nemo, but my wife had suggested it, and I kind of like dug around a little bit, just kind of poking around, and I stumbled on this arcade game that I had never heard of before, and I love the NES game, and I just was not aware of this. I guess this game just kind of got lost to time, and since it was a licensed game, it just never really saw re-release or ports or anything like that, and obviously the movie flopping didn't help much either. Um, so I just wanted to look into it a little bit more, and I didn't realize also that Little Nemo was over 100 years old, turned into the 20th century comic strip that had such a big influence. So, uh, yeah, it was an interesting video to research, and uh, I was hoping that this new Capcom arcade collection that just was, uh, just was released for Switch might have it, but sadly no, and I guess it's a licensed game. But anyways, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, it was kind of a fun one to make, and more to come. Thanks. Bye.